Hello and welcome to another Phoenix podcast. My name is Tamara and my guest today is Tony Vitali. Tony, hi again. Hi Tamara again. Uh, thanks for inviting me. It's nice to have you here. Um, can you tell us what we are going to talk about today for change? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, we agreed to talk about uh, some of the basic rules for uh, smart investing. Uh, we can talk about this topic for a uh, probably very long time, but we're going to try and keep it short. Uh, I have five uh, simple tips uh, that make a smart investor or that make the, the process uh, smart. Let's, let's put it that way. True. So uh, today's topic will be, as you said, five uh, tips for smart investing. Um, I guess the first one should be that uh, we should start early. That would mm. be a very smart tip, but uh, if we haven't done so, then uh, the best <laughs> is to start as soon as you can. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, as I always like to say, time is the most important factor when it comes to investing. Of course, it's important uh, how much we save and invest, and uh, it's important what we invest in, of course. Yeah, but uh, time is probably the most important factor so uh, the sooner the better but on the other hand of course we cannot change the past so if we didn't start investing before it doesn't matter we still probably have a lot of time left uh, sometimes i get uh, emails from people that tell me ah oh, you know i'm already 35 38 i didn't start investing is it too late for me already like, yeah <laughs> And I'm like, uh, you know, my, my mother started uh, investing when she, she was 60. So uh, for your 35, 38, I think you have a very, very long time period in front of you. Uh, in developed countries, the, the average uh, age that people can uh, expect is around 80 years or, or more. And it's getting longer and longer as the years go by. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, the vast majority... That's just never give up. There is always time. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I think the vast majority of the people that, that are watching us right now have a very long uh, time period to, to invest uh, in front of them. So uh, the sooner, the better. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's the saying that uh, the best time to plant a tree was uh, maybe a year ago or a couple of years ago, but the second best time is, is today. So uh, it's the same with investing. So uh, the math uh, here is simple. The, the longer we have some funds invested, even if you start with uh, smaller sums uh, the more we give time to the compound interest to, to do its magic so uh, to have you know returns go uh, on returns and returns again like year after year like interest on interest on interest it uh, builds up uh, after a while you and i often mention that uh, the real investing might not sound too attractive right mm -hmm. <laughs> So I think one of the things that uh, we also have to connect uh, to investing like we do in our life is uh, to try to do it consistently. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, uh, uh, when people uh, talk about investing, they, they usually have this image of you know Wall Street uh, movies and uh, people are running around yelling and uh, buying stocks and selling them <laughs> in the same minute and, and so forth. But uh, yeah, to be honest, uh, uh, investing that has been proven that is the best way for uh, the regular folks to invest is, is the long-term uh, passive investing. Why? Because it gives the, the best results. It uh, controls the risk uh, in the best possible way. So uh, it's it's not that uh, uh, filled with adrenaline as, as active investing is, but uh, statistically gives the best results. So uh, I always like to follow data. I always like to follow uh, proven uh, proven statistics and numbers. So uh, basically, uh, yeah, investing consistently is the is the second tip uh, for smart investing. So what does it mean? I mean, even if we have a certain uh, sum of money that we already saved up, we can invest a part of it or, or choose to uh, invest it over a, long, a longer time period. But then going forward, or if we don't have any uh, savings at all right now, for majority of the people, we have certain monthly uh, income and monthly expenses. And um, we, we say that it's better maybe to pay yourself first so not to wait the end of the month and wait you know what is the difference going to be between income and expenses but every single month maybe uh, put a certain amount of money on the side like maybe when your uh, salary comes that you know okay this sum i can always uh, i can always save i can always invest and just do it consistently and regularly so and then if at the end of the month we have some extra funds we can invest more but uh, I always like to automate uh, investing and I think it's a good idea to uh, yeah, have a certain amount of money every single month that we can put towards our investments. 
and basically forget about it. When we do it at the beginning of the month, we forget mm. about that money. We don't count on it. So uh, it's much easier afterwards. Exactly. And, and we can make uh, simple recurring payments uh, with our bank or digital bank uh, app that we're using. Just, you know, uh, make a simple payment every single month on a on the same date uh, with the same amount. So I would say that's by far the, the easiest and most most simple way uh, to start with investing, but it also gives uh, really good results in, in the long run. The third one is definitely uh, also a very important one, and this is to build a diverse portfolio. Mm -hmm. We often talk about that, so <laughs> I think it's... Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, in the previous uh, podcast episode, we talked about some of the basic concepts of investing. So we mentioned uh, compound interest, uh, risk and return and so forth. But uh, one of the basic concepts is also diversification. So uh, that's that's a very, uh, may maybe a complex sounding term, but it's fairly simple. It says that we should not keep all our investments, you know, in uh, in one uh, in one single uh, investment or all our savings uh, in one single investment, but rather uh, we should try and uh, uh, invest in multiple uh, different investments. So um, today it's much easier than ever to get uh, very wide diversification, so very wide uh, dispersion of risk to many, many, many uh, different investments by simply buying uh, funds like ETFs, which are passive, which contain uh, hundreds or even thousands of different stocks, different bonds. And then again, we can you know combine a portfolio of different ETFs. So each one of them has uh, hundreds or thousands of different uh, stocks and bonds. And if we don't know how to do it ourselves, there are robo advisors like Phoenix that do it for us. So uh, basically, it's very, very simple today to uh, diversify, even if we invest uh, you know smaller uh, sums of money every month. Yes, but that's a definitely one of the very important tips that nobody should skip, right? Uh, diversification is uh, something that really um, helps us a lot regarding uh, risk and in a way as you said we don't want to keep everything in one basket it's much better to mm. <laughs> have a few baskets and uh, this is one rule which uh, we should all abide i think uh, by uh, so the next one uh, mm. might be uh, might sound <laughs> not uh, so good but uh, basically you don't need to chase the highest return so maybe you want to explain what we thought about um, this topic. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, we talked about last time as well that uh, maybe some people when they hear maybe eight, nine percent per year, it doesn't seem like much, but uh, uh, it's very uh, easy to underestimate the power of compound interest at eight or nine percent uh, per year. Uh, it's it's pretty substantial uh, in the long run. Um, but then again, we, we should not uh, expect much more than that. So a lot of investors maybe come into investing with uh, uh, expectations that uh, are not realistic, uh, that are not uh, founded on any uh, data in the past. So we always have to uh, go and look, you know, for the very long term data, especially in these markets that have been around for at least 100 plus years uh, in developed countries like the stock market or or the bond market. And then uh, based on that, we can we can make at least an estimate of what do we expect for the for the long term. Uh, but then if we try to cut corners, if we try to go, uh, you know, passive investing, if we try to start investing in uh, much more riskier assets, yeah, sure, we have some chance that we're going to have higher returns, but uh, uh, there's a quite, quite bigger chance that we're going to get lower returns than, than the passive investing. And uh, a lot of statistics, a lot of research uh, has shown that, especially for people that that are not professionals, but even for professionals, uh, it's not it's not easy to to beat uh, these uh, market averages uh, that we mentioned, especially for the for the stock market. Yes, that's uh, definitely one of those things that we mentioned that uh, you know investments and investing uh, can seem boring um, when it comes to passive investing, but it's the way to go, as we know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, at the end of the day, as you say, statistics prove that uh, day after day and year after year. So um, I guess uh, it's good to take that tip as well. And the last one uh, regarding tracking investments regularly. Mm -hmm. 
I would say uh, track investments uh, regularly, but not too regularly. Uh, at least that's that's the case for me personally. Uh, I know when I was much younger and I was, you know, dabbling in uh, cryptocurrency stuff like that, I would wake up and check my phone every single morning. Okay, what's the status on my investments and so forth? But ever ever since I started to, to passively invest through ETFs and stuff like that, I realized that. Uh, uh, maybe it's not it's not the best you know to have this kind of uh, stress every single day and so forth so i would say that yeah for sure we should track our investments how are they doing uh, over time but don't stress out over uh, some yeah, I, uh, i'd say this is mainly for maybe this shorter uh, investments mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. uh, you are talking about probably needing money in the short term so you want mm -hmm. to know if this investment is going the way that you need it uh, in in maybe six months or uh one year as you mm -hmm. said and um for the rest as we know for long term is much better to actually for forget about it we always mentioned that uh they say that the best investors are the dead ones and the second best are the ones who forgot about their investments so mm -hmm. When it comes to this, it's just about maybe, you know, checking if after uh, some time your maybe um, dynamics in your portfolio or whatever are mm -hmm. corresponding to now your knowledge, your experience and what mm -hmm. you want. Because obviously at the beginning of your investing journey, you're going to be probably and will be needing to be more conservative. Also, the robo advisor will prepare you more conservative strategy if you have not had any experience or uh, if you don't know anything about investing. Mm. Then um, the case uh, will obviously be different in a few years when you have already had some experience under your belt and when you will be able to say that maybe you can go more dynamic, have more shares in your portfolio than you've had originally. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me personally, I only track my investments uh, once a quarter. So every three months, I just log into all my accounts. Okay, I see, you know, what's what's happening. Is everything in line with uh, my goals and my, and my plans? But I don't track it much more than that. Uh, people sometimes you know ask me, oh, did you see this recent drop in the markets? And and I tell them, no, not really. Like yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't follow the markets regularly, yeah. day by day. Even though I wrote about these topics, uh, I have uh, educational material about these topics, but it's not important to to track. Uh, I only find out about those because of my work, not because of my personal accounts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then so, I maybe decide to use the opportunity, even though I'm uh, most of the time fully invested, uh, that you know, to use the opportunity to invest some more if uh, there is any money <laughs> available, uh, if cases like this happen. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. this is just for you to, uh, especially at the beginning, to mm. find out, you know, if everything is aligned to uh, what you wanted, especially when uh, you are maybe uh, not so familiar with what you're investing in and everything I, I think it's pretty natural that people feel a bit nervous at the beginning of mm. uh, what is happening and um, how is their money doing but yeah overall uh, it's really and that's what passive investing is all about you know investing like you say sending money regularly monthly mm. and forgetting about it and then checking every now and then every few years and being positively surprised <laughs> yeah exactly i mean there's gonna be bumps uh, on the way uh, yes. that's for sure to expect so it's perfectly normal that the stock market has uh, 10 15 20 or even more percent yes. uh, drop but if you look at the curve if you zoom out and look at the, yes. the long term it always uh, goes exponentially as you know the whole uh, that's a part style. of uh, investing journey and everyone who invests needs to know that that's uh, never going to be a straight line uh, exactly exactly so. the thing that we said last time uh, if we want to have these returns we have to take a certain amount of risk uh, because if there was no risk uh, then the, the returns wouldn't be wouldn't be this high so uh, the risk is always involved but uh, with diversification with long-term investing we really um we really control that risk as much as possible so i uh, really cut it down to the to the minimum measure and then uh, the whole magic is just about you know investing regularly investing for the law for the long term yes uh i think uh we've we've given them the five uh, most important insights <laughs> on uh, smart investing and um the only thing we can say you know if you haven't done um uh, 
so before just start investing and try it out uh, you can start even with the smaller amounts uh, but you will see uh, that over time uh, you will get more comfortable and that uh, after all it's a good way to uh, make your money work for you yeah for sure i mean uh, this is a very very easy and simple way to uh, build uh, towards your financial goals whether it to be uh, retirement whether it be uh, some other life goals that uh, that require uh, the the use of money so i think uh, yeah passive investing is very affordable now let's let's put it that way it's very easy to start with you don't need a, a large sums of money to really make a difference uh, for yourself in the long term yeah thank you tony uh, again for um, these tips it's uh, really great to have you again with us and uh, i hope uh, we have helped you uh, a little bit today with our tips and uh, we are going to see you soon again on our channel yeah always good to be here tamara and uh, see you in uh, in another podcast thank you tony bye